Good morning. Welcome to Christ United Methodist Church. Those of us who are gathered here in person this morning, as well as those who are watching online, we are here to worship God in spirit and in truth. Please be active in ministry. Listen to the songs that are sung. They're so special this morning. Give a shout out for Shelby, who is our liturgist for the rest of this month. And let's worship God together. Good morning, church. Shelby gave me the mic for just a minute. Um, I had ran out of time this week, but uh, our uh, Susan Ideas, who is a certified lay minister, they are called many times to be on other committees serving outside the church. And she's on the endowment committee, which is a very important role as they decide to give thousands and thousands of dollars to ministry. She'll be out of the office, and I am looking for someone to cover the office Monday. We have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday covered, but see me at the back if you can cover the office this Monday. Thanks. For the rest of our announcements today, um, there's going to be the annual CUMC Adult Christmas Party on December 6th. Um, Joy Lunch Bunch will be on Tuesday, December 17th at 11.30 a.m. at El Patron. Um, the Emerson Weekends Backpacks, we will once again be collecting snacks and food for the Emerson's Backpacks. Sunday school has started today for children's ages 4 through 5th and for teenagers. Yay. Um, the Safer Sanctuary in-person training will be on Saturday, September 21st at 9.30 a.m. This training is required for staff members and anyone who is involved with children, youth, or vulnerable adults, and anyone who currently has a set of church keys. Um, we will, on September, there, the September Missions Outreach is this month's mission outreach. It is the APS Title I program, and more details on these announcements will be in your bulletin. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. We come to worship the God who created us. We are beautiful made in the image of God. And what is God like? God is gentle and wise, full of peace and full of mercy. We come to worship the God who is creating us. God is making us gentle and wise, full of peace and full of mercy. Thanks be to God and Jesus Christ. Amen. Please remain standing and as we sing our 
first song of worship, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. <laughs> self-ambition in us that blocks us from living as you want us to live. Free us to do the good that you give us to do. Help us commit to what is good wholeheartedly and with courage. Amen. Amen. The choir is at a bit of a disadvantage this morning because our back screen is not working. We had wonderful workers here all week to uh, fix the roof, so we are good to go, but we're having to kind of adjust a little bit, aren't we? Yep. Yeah, so let's give a hand for the roof. little Amen. things. Woo this is a time when we share our love for one another as we pass the peace of Christ with the word, the peace of Christ be with you and your responses, and also with you. Let us pass this the peace. Of understanding, we thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. 
May our gifts, given in gentleness, help to make us agents of your peace, that we might produce a harvest of righteousness in our world. Amen. Amen. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one.
blessed and loving God, we humbly come before you to praise your name for all your blessings, blessings of health, blessings of peace and prosperity, which are renewed for us each and every morning. Let your mercy follow us in holiness and in innocence, that we might live lives that are pure and righteous in truth and humility. Supply us with your words of truth that we might speak grace and confidence. Develop in us that opportunity to know your presence each and every morning when the worries of our lives and our doubts and our fears arise. Deepen our trust in your faithful care and in your mighty power. Fill our hearts with grace and kindness so that we may spread your love in every action. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So today, the sermon is going to be on Do No Harm. And that is actually from John Wesley, who started the Methodist Church back there in England. Do any of you know what the word harm means? Hurtful. Hurtful. That's very good. So if I walked up to Faith here and I hit her as hard as I could in the arm, and it sounded like this. Okay, harder than that. But it sounded like that. That would hurt, right? Yeah. So another word for harm is hurtful. So you don't want to do, do no harm. So I want to see everybody's tongue. Everybody stick out your tongue. I want to see all your tongues. Can you cut your nose with it? You can't clean your nose with your tongue like a cow? Okay. Well, you know, the tongue, the tongue is one of the members of our body. That's what James in the Bible calls it. That can cause a lot of hurt. You may think, me hitting you, you end up in the hospital. But if I said something mean to you, yeah. or said something mean about you, you'd end up in therapy. <laughs> so the, the, remember the tongue, what you say with your tongue can hurt people. Now I know you've heard that old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Is that true? No. It's not true. That's a coping mechanism so that it makes you feel better about what the person says to you, but it still hurts. That's why you need that coping mechanism. That's why you need to think that, but it still hurts. That's why you're thinking it. It's very hurtful when somebody says something mean to you or about you. So remember that not only can you do something hurtful, physically hurtful by hitting someone, you can hurt somebody by saying something or calling them names. You wouldn't do that though, would you? Never. <laughs> so just remember, we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. We're gonna give our jazz hands. Jazz hands. One, two, three. Dear Lord, please help us to remember that we need to be kind with our words the things that come out of our mouths. Help us to say nice things to people, not call them names, not say bad things about them. Help us to do your will. Help us to be the kind of people that you want us to be. In Jesus Christ, amen. One thing I forgot to mention earlier today, the reason we have all these young folks up here today is because they have grandparents. So happy Grandparents Day to each and every one of you who is blessed with grandchildren. It's so wonderful to uh, think about. My grandkids are scattered all across the country. Pennsylvania, Tucson, and up in Farmington. So I see them via Facebook. <laughs> so if you have grandkids that are close to you and you get that hug, blessings on you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of James. If my iPad will unlock because we don't have our screen up this morning. 
There we are. From the book of James this morning, in the third chapter, beginning in the 13th verse, let's listen for a word from God. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show by the good conduct that their works are done in meekness and wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But if wisdom, the wisdom that is from above, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. This is the word of God for the people of God, and together we say, Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Father, as we enter into this time in your word, we invite your Holy Spirit to teach us all things. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Well, one day in Jerusalem, a female journalist had heard about an old Jewish gentleman who had been going to the Wailing Wall, you know what the Wailing Wall is there in Jerusalem, for a very long time. So she went to check it out. She watched him pray, and after about 45 minutes, when he got up to leave, she approached him and said, may I ask you some questions? And he said, yes. He said, well, how long have you been coming to this wall and praying? He said, for about 60 years. 60 years, that's amazing. What do you pray for? Well, I pray for peace, he said. I pray for all hatred to stop. I pray for all of our children to grow up safely and in friendship. Well, how do you feel, she said, after doing this for about for 60 years? He said, like I'm talking to a wall. <laughs> hmm. You know, we live in in such a fast-paced, frenzied, complex world, and we all long for that peace, for that getting along with others. Just look at the news. I mean, we're two months from a presidential election, and all of the vile, all of the hatred that's coming across our airwaves is just adding to all of the hatred and cruelty that's already in the world this turbulence that we experience each and every day with the wars and the rumors of the wars, and we're in the middle of such a tumultuous time. And we search for ways to overcome the divisiveness that separates, listen to these words, separate, disparages, belittles, disrespects, leaves us all wounded and and incomplete. Karen's message was so wonderful how our words can hurt. But we know that continuing in this way is, is not an option. We're not going to survive if we keep going at the rate that we're going because the risks are too high and the results are way too costly. There must be a new way that is clear and understandable for all of us. How many of you feel like that's kind of a pretty accurate description of what's going on in our world today? Well, back in the 1700s in England, as Karen has already made mention of, that's how they described what was going on back then. And in those dark days, there was a movement that arose that changed society. It changed the way people think. It changed people's lives. This powerful movement that spread like wildfire is called Methodism. And as its leader, Reverend John Wesley, told his followers, if you want to be a part of this movement, if you want to change your life and the lives of others, then follow these three simple rules. Do no harm do good, and stay in love with God. 
What Wesley was teaching to the early Methodists is in a time not different from ours. So it's extremely relevant for us. And over the next three weeks, we're going to be looking at Wesley's three simple rules using Reuben Job's book, Three Simple Rules, A Wesleyan Way of Living. It's a little brown book. I left it in my office. I apologize. Have you ever done Wesley's Three Simple Rules? It's a little brown book about this big. We'll probably find some and look at it as we go along. But Wesley's first rule was do no harm. He described it as no fighting, no lying, no cheating, no stealing, no shady business deals, no hurtful words. Doesn't that sound easy? Mm. Well, in Africa, there is a principle called Ubuntu. Ubuntu, it's kind of hard to say. It, Ubuntu can be translated in the idea like, I am connected, therefore I am. And Archbishop Desmond Tutu, the leader of the Truth and Reconciliation Movement in the post-apartheid South Africa, was inspired by this concept of Ubuntu in his work, and he described it this way. Ubuntu means that in order for you to be all that you can be, I have to be all that I can be. And for me to be all that I can be, you must be all that you can be. You see, our lives are intertwined. And when we harm others, we harm ourselves. And when we harm ourselves, we're harming others. Matthew 7 verse 12 speaks of how Jesus spoke of it. He said, in everything do unto others as you would have them do unto you, for this is the law and the prophets. What he was saying is all of scripture comes together in this understanding of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's do no harm. You see, one of the amazing things about our Christian life together is when we can commit to doing no harm, we'll discover just how connected we really are. When I'm trying really hard, I'm determined to do no harm to you, well, then I lose my fear of you. And we find that is a good and, and a solid place to stand when we can see a way forward in the faithfulness of God when we can see how we all share together an equal measure of God's unlimited love. God doesn't love anyone more than anyone else. Therefore, I should not love anyone more or less than anyone else. But have you ever wondered why we do things that harm one another? Well, let's look at bullies, for example. Anybody ever suffer under the tyranny of a bully? Yeah. Well, see, we tend to bully when we want to feel better about ourselves. And we do it out of personal benefit because we get something out of it. Look at me. Look how much stronger, bigger, brighter am I am than you. That's bullying. You know, sometimes we volunteer, right? But we have to have our focus in the right place. Sometimes we volunteer so that we can put it on a resume and we can congratulate ourselves for being such wonderful, selfless people. And we put people down so that we can feel better about ourselves. We keep harming one another because we ourselves are hurting and we want to feel better. You've heard the phrase, hurt people hurt people? Yeah. So it begins this vicious cycle where we're all just tearing one another down all the time. We're harming one another because we're only concerned about ourselves. It's kind of like diving into that big old bag of candy. Once you get started, you just can't stop because we're feeding on what we feel like we need. And we can get locked into conflict over some profound issues. Just look at the news. 
Just look at our political arena right now. We're, we're locked in conflict, some very profound issues, but sometimes the issues we get locked into are just plain silly. I remember a conversation years ago about toilet paper in the bathrooms. And it became, for this particular group, a huge issue over the toilet paper in the bathrooms. And I finally looked at one of the folks and I said, you know what? I like a particular type of toilet paper, a particular thickness. I'm just glad that it's on the roll in the first place. Amen? <laughs> you know, sometimes we get so involved in the minutia of things that we want to go our way. But if I'm trying to do no harm, I'm aware of the other person's feelings. I can't speak negatively about them or judgmentally about them involved in the conflict. If I'm trying to do no harm, I can't manipulate the facts of the conflict. And I can't diminish the life and the worth of someone who doesn't agree with me because I must honor them as a child of God, just as I would like to be honored. You see, just because we're connected as children of God doesn't mean we're always going to get along. And it's often during these disagreements that some of our greatest harm can be done. Galatians Chapter 5, verse 15 tells us that the entire law is fulfilled in keeping one command. Think about it. The entire law is fulfilled by keeping one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. You see, we need to agree. We need to agree that we're not going to harm those with whom we disagree. And then we can be engaged in constructive dialogue. We can gain new insights. We can commit as Christians to doing no harm. And the whole context, the whole climate of maybe a disagreement will change. If I'm doing no harm to you, I'm going to want to listen to what you have to say. I'm going to strive not to manipulate, to get it my way. And a safe place can be created where we can stand and we can learn and discern together. We can share the best of what we all have to offer instead of displaying the worst. One of my mentors years ago discerned in me some struggles I was having with myself. I was causing myself harm, not physically, but emotionally, because of the way I was talking to myself. Have you ever done that? You dummy. You're such a dork. Why did you do that? You know, we, we've all done that. And she told me to every morning, look in the mirror, look in the mirror, and put my hand toward myself and say, I celebrate you. I celebrate you. Talking to me. I'm talking to me. I'm celebrating you. If we all did that, if we all celebrated our own worth, then that opens the doors for us to celebrate the others and do, as John Wesley said, do no harm. Thinking about putting your hand up toward your mirror, what if we all had a sticky note that said do no harm and it was on the mirror or it was on the refrigerator or it was on the coffee pot <laughs> or it was on our steering wheels or it was on our dashboards. Maybe it comes up on our phone. When we're tempted to treat others with the less respect that we'd even like for ourselves, that thought will begin to flash into our minds, do no harm. And if everyone did this, if we all promised to refuse to do anything that brings harm to someone, can you imagine what our world would be like? In his book, Three Simple Rules, The Wesleyan Way of Life, 
Reuben Job says, Are we ready to give up political power for the power of God's love? Are we ready to give up our most cherished possession, that is, cert that is the certainty that we are right and others are wrong? Can we trust God enough to follow the ways of the Spirit rather than the ways of the Lord? If we choose to follow this way, he says, uh, will others see us as weak or at their mercy rather than as powerful and in control of every situation? When we choose this way, will our position be eroded and our point be lost? This risk, he says, seems so great, and often our fears speak louder than our faith. We are so often afraid to yield to someone else because we're afraid to lose our power. And when we look at our own lives, our power doesn't come from ourselves. Our power comes from the Spirit of God residing on the inside of us. So rather than inventing something new, Reverend John Wesley incorporated what Jesus taught with this structure of faithful living, his three simple rules. He said, keep close, I beseech you, to every means of grace. Strive to walk in all the ordinances and commandments of God as blameless. Add to your faith virtue, to your virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, temperance, to temperance, patience, to patience, godliness, and to godliness, kindness, and to kindness, charity. He wrote that on May the 6th in 1760. How many years have passed? And as followers of Jesus Christ in the Methodist way, do we still fall into the trap of doing harm to one another. Reverend Job goes on to say that the good news is this. We don't have to make this journey alone. There was always one who stands and walks with us, not only stands and walks with us, but invades us with spirit presence and spirit power to practice our faith with integrity and in faithfulness to the one we seek to follow. Doing no harm means I will be on guard in all of my actions and even in my silence, so I will not add injury to another of God's children or to a part of God's creation. John Wesley and the early Methodists said they determined every day in life to be invested in the effort of bringing healing rather than hurting, wholeness instead of division, harmonies in the ways of Jesus rather than the ways of the world. I get uh, teased a lot. Um, I love to go to the store and interact with people at the store. It's just, you know, it's my sociability, I guess. Yesterday, I won't say which store it was because I don't want you to be afraid to go there. But as we were as we were crossing, you know, and the cars are supposed to stop so that we can cross to go into the store, there was a woman with a walker and she was kind of having trouble. She caught my eye, so I started to drift toward her to see if I could help. Well, two cars had stopped at the stop signs appropriately, one this way and one this way. Another car came toward us and rather than stopping, it decided to go between the two cars and just keep going through the crosswalk, even though there were people in the crosswalk. Well, you know me. I walked up to that car that was trespassing, if you will, and I just tapped it on the hood. And I said, stop, and I pointed to the woman trying to cross on her walker. And the couple in the car were going, to me, get out of the way, get out of the way. They were still wanting to go through. And I got in front of the car. And I just stood there. <laughs> until the lady with her walker got a little further up. And then I just walked over and you know, 
talked with her as we walked on in. <laughs> All it takes is just being aware of situations around us where we can interact with the Spirit of God and be vessels of grace. Maybe sometimes, you know, being a, a little, maybe I was out of order, I don't know. But the thought that harm might come to this woman caused me to go into action. For those of you who have been together as couples for quite some time, have you ever noticed that two people in a long and successful relationship filled with love, begin to think and act and even look like one another? I've been told that. I look at Bruce and say, oh, I don't know if I want to look like that or not. <laughs> but we begin to take on the characteristics of one another. Those who practice this simple rule, do no harm, stay in love with God. We begin to think and act by who? Our partner, Jesus Christ. This simple and huge steps toward living this holy life will bring goodness and healing to everyone that it touches in so many wonderful ways. As we end this portion of Wesley's three simple rules, let's listen to a word from the Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 3. You are the people of God. God loved you and chose you for God's own. So then you must clothe yourself with compassion and kindness, humility and gentleness and patience. Be tolerant, Paul says, with one another. And forgive one another whenever any of you has a complaint against someone else. If you have a Bible at home that you write in, Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Circle that word, whenever. Whenever you have a complaint against someone else. You must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. And all of these qualities will add love, which binds all things together in perfect unity. Amen? Amen. Do no harm. Do all the good you can and stay in love with God. Wesley's wise words for then and for now. Thanks be to God. Amen. We'll join together now in our affirmation of faith. It's found on 883. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make anew, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Grace and God of glory.
watching the news, reading the paper, being on your computer, iPad all the time, watching what's going on in the world, can definitely lead us to weak resignation. But we are strong in the power and the might of the Lord Jesus Christ living in us. So let us go from this place and let us be those individuals showing so much grace that the world will want to know who we know and where we've been. What are we doing? We have such an opportunity to share that grace as we do no harm, as we do all the good we can, and as we stay in love with God. So go from this place enlivened, empowered, enkindled, enthralled with the love of God for the people that God loves so much. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let's go be the church. Amen. Amen. Amen.